Hey everybody, welcome to Purtle Monday. Purtle Monday where the puzzles are real and the cookies don't matter. What are Purtle Mondays? Here we work on puzzles and riddles. I'm trying to get better at armchair treasure hunts and puzzles and riddles are one of those ways, in my opinion, we can get better at armchair treasure hunts. And we have a little bit of fun here too. K-Pro says, finally. Oh, finally, says K-Pro. Alan K, welcome. Jimmy Fast, welcome. Uh, here we work on puzzles and riddles. Uh, the reason we do puzzle and riddles, and I, f I focus on word puzzles and riddles, is Evan Penn, hey peeps, is uh, the reason for word puzzles is because a lot of armchair treasure hunts use uh, word sort of words and you require lateral thinking or knowledge of different definitions or synonyms or antonyms or something about these words where they hide something and then we try to figure out where a treasure is located. And here on Priddle Monday, I'm trying to get better at armchair treasure hunts and so we work on puzzles and riddles together. Great distraction from current events is Auntie Mae. <laughs> One of my riddles was in an escape room. <laughs> All right. Well, a lot of these riddles we see more often, so it, it makes uh, makes sense that you might have seen a riddle in an escape room. Escape rooms is another one where you have to require, you know, that in escape rooms you got to work together, uh, you got to think think together. You also have to be a little bit organized, making sure people are not all doing the same thing or not everybody's doing different things. Uh, I've got that chance last year. That, that's I still that's my only escape room that I did was last year at the World Series event. That was a lot of fun. Alan Kay turned 40 and buried your grandmother today. Wow. It's quite a day, Alan Kay. Glad you could be here. Uh, welcome to your 40s and sorry to hear about your grandmother. And other things is like sometimes I want to introduce some things, uh, different armchair treasure hunts. Uh, there's one that came out last month. It's on the Mysterious Writings Forum. It's called Just for Kicks. Now this... Armchair Treasure Hunt does not have an actual treasure that we're looking for. However, uh, last once a month, and this is now the second month, they they're just started hunt number two this past weekend. Over the next two weeks, it gives you the opportunity to try to figure out um, either, let's see, it's, it's a poem. In this fair city, you must find the girl so pretty. It's a, it's a little poem. It's the ask who or what I am, who or what am I? An interesting little poem, and in my thought, do, working on these kind of little treasure hunts, looking at different poems, this might help you figure out where that Forest Fen poem, Forest Fen treasures that a lot of you are working on out there. Cookie maker of the world, says Cray Pro. So um, there is no treasure with this one. However, he's got a couple different rules. There's some type of point system. Uh, you can look at the hunt number one that was done and look at the solution and results. Uh, there's a couple of rules. You have to submit your answers to E. Fanton, who created this uh, series of treasure hunts. And again, it's called Just for Kicks. And this is an opportunity to work on something. Yes, there's no treasure at the end. But this, you just sort of figure it out. And this is what we do on our show. We try to figure things out, come up with an answer. We work on it cooperatively. But here you can figure something out on your own. Uh, he asks that you can don't provide answers, but you can provide clues publicly. You know, you can work together, but don't work together publicly. And so read the introduction and the rules. It's on Mysterious Writings. It's called Just for Kicks. It's in the forum section. Check it out. Gives you a chance to work on something other than Pritto Monday. You know, do a Pritto Monday today, but you can work on something else. Sort of... It, Everything that we do here, it's working on vocabulary, thinking outside the box, lateral thinking, trying to put the logical thinking to the side, trying to get that other side of our brain to help us figure out things. And we have just a little bit of fun at the same time. We are going to start on some riddles. This is one that I saw and I have not looked at the answer. And this riddle is I was, was, before was, was, was. What am I? <laughs> I saw this one. I was like, man, I got to know what the answer to this one is. I was, was before was, was, was. What am I? That is the riddle. And I chose the hard ones because you guys are getting too good at the easy ones. I'll still throw in easy ones every once in a while, but these are supposed to be a hard riddle. 
Is, is, or is, 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 says K-Pro. I was, was, before, was, was, was. Okay. Before, says Auntie Mame. Now K-Pro says just is. I was, was, before, was, was, was. What am I? Auntie Mame says before. K-Pro thinks it's either is, 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 or is, is, is. Evan Penn says twas. <laughs> What am I? Is it is it just like I I was? I was was before was was was. What am I? I think of there is a there there. Is there a there there? Was there a was was? Not important thinks it's I. Welcome, not important. I was was before was was was. What am I? Jimmy Fast thinks it's just was. All right, let's find out what the answer is. Because I I'm, saw this one, I wonder what the answer is. Answer. Show me. Answer is is. The question is actually asking, what is the verb was in its present tense form? Somebody had Capro rephrased, I previously was before was previously was from before. So the answer is, is, the question is actually asking, asking, what is the verb was in its present tense form? Yes. So what does this mean? K-Pro gets the first cookie. K-Pro gets the first cookie for correctly answering is first. What is the verb was in its previously present tense form? I was, was, before, was, was, was. <laughs> K-Pro is 100% right. <laughs> uh, how do I move to the next page? Next riddle. All right, well, that's an easy one. No, no, these are supposed to be hard riddles. Boo. Hard riddles, please. Hard riddles. Uh, not those. Okay, here we go. Page two. We're not doing cuts. All right, here we go. That cookie has rabbit chips. <laughs> yes, clock. What has hands, a, a face, and two hands? The answer is clock, Auntie Mame. But that's an easy one. We've done we've done that one before. <laughs> Depends on the definition of it. You can, okay, you can easily touch me, but not see me. You can throw me out, but not away. What am I? You can easily touch me, but not see me. You can throw me out, but not away. What am I? Yeah, so many times. It's not a bad riddle. It's just, I think we... I think uh, we're all getting a, a little too good on the easy riddles. It's a dirty joke. You can easily touch me, but not see me. You can throw me out, but not away. What am I? I'm thinking it's something metaphorical. So I was thinking feelings. You can easily touch me, but not see me. You can throw me out, but not away. What am I? Evan Penn says air. Okay, I can see that. You can easily touch me, but not see me. You can throw me out, but not away. What am I? Tony Reese says a thought. K-Pro says wish. Can you easily touch a wish? Can you easily touch a thought? Hmm, I'm not sure. Love, prayer, feelings. We got some metaphorical ideas here. You can easily touch me, but not see me. You can throw me out, but not away. What am I? Again, with the feelings, you can easily touch me, 
but not see me. You can throw me out, but not away. Feelings, feelings. All right, let's see what the answer is. Uh, Got to make me pull it down. You're back. You can easily touch me, but not see me. You can throw me out, throw out your back, but you can't throw it away. What am I? It's your back. All right, that's not bad. You can touch your back, but you can't see it. You can throw it out your back, but you can't throw it away. That's not bad. I like that. Feelings is a much better answer, says k <laughs> Uh So do I do back? Here we go. All right, we're not doing that one. We're not doing a math one. We're not doing that. All right. All right, here we go. You can see your back, especially in a mirror. I got you. You're here to be humbled, says CT. All right, hum I will humble you away, or you will humble me. Two women apply for a job. They are identical and have the same mother, father, and birthday. The interviewer asks, are you twins? To which they honestly reply, no. How is this possible? All right, well, I think we've had something similar to this. Humble pie, says Tony Rusi. Two women apply for a job. They are identical, have the same mother, father, and birthday. The interviewer asks, are you twins? To which they honestly reply, no. How is this possible? You can see her back looking in her mirror. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's a riddle. It's a riddle, D-Pro. Triplets. There it's okay. I knew we had seen this one before. Interviewer asks, they're identical, have the same mother, father, birthday. Are you twins? Which they honestly reply, no. It's because they're triplets. Yes, Evan Penn. We've had this one before. I had forgotten. Yes. Because when they ask, are they are you twins? They honestly reply, no, because they are triplets. Cookie for Evan Penn. He's 10, give him a break. <laughs> All's fair in love and cookies? How about that? <laughs> All right, I think I gotta go back. And All right, peas and lentils. We've had something similar. We're not doing the cash one. All right, we'll do this one. All's fair, yes, riddles and cookies. Tomorrow is neither Wednesday nor Thursday. Yesterday was not Friday or Saturday. Today is not Thursday, nor Monday, nor Sunday. What day is today? Uh-oh, Sweetie says I need to give him a cookie. All right. Sweetie says I need to give cookie. Cookie for D-Pro. There you go. Oh, she, K Pro is going with the, <laughs> K Pro is going with the shotgun approach. Oh my goodness! Today is my birthday. <laughs> All right, Monday, Tuesday. She can she can type quick. Man, K Pro knows how to type fast. She did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All before anyone else. <laughs> so tomorrow is neither Wednesday nor Thursday. So that takes out Tuesday, Wednesday. Today is not Thursday, Monday, or Saturday. So that leaves Saturday, right? Or Friday. Yesterday was not Friday or Saturday. So I'm thinking it's Friday or Saturday, but I'm not quite seeing it. Today is Friday. Today is Friday. Who had Friday first? G. I think it was K-Pro. <laughs> 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 
And there's the explanation since you needed. If you want the explanation, you can you can read that. I'm not reading it. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, quota of grain to authorities. Okay, we're not doing that. All right, here we go. Bad situation. If you tell the truth, I'll strangle you. If you lie, I'll chop your head off. How do you get out of the situation? Mm. <laughs> she gets a stale Tuesday cookie. <laughs> Uh, yesterday, next week, back a while. If you tell the truth, I'll strangle you. If you lie, I'll chop your head off. All right, it has something to do with your neck. How do you get? How do you get out of this situation? Don't say a word. Stay silent. Duck. If you tell the truth, I'll strangle you. If you lie, I'll chop your head off. So yes, we, we have to do something. Stay silent. Don't speak. If you tell the truth, I'll strangle you. If you lie, I'll chop your head off. How do you get out of the situation? I'm thinking like a suit of armor and then you put like the, the head part of the armor. Carbon fiber turtleneck. Wow. Very specific. k Pros is get a gun. <laughs> uh, silence. Tell the truth, you still have your head. Mm. If you tell the truth, I'll strangle you. If you lie, I'll chop off your head. I'll chop your head off. Let me make sure I get it right. How do you get out of the situation? I like the thinking though. Stay silent, duck, don't say a word. Auntie Mames, is it a is it a vegetable? Have your friend answer, says Ryan Matthews. Lori James says run. <laughs> so we're trying to come up with a situation to avoid getting strangled, avoid getting your head chopped off. Tell the truth, you get one. If you lie, it's the other one. So I'm thinking it's something, tell a half-truth, says Evan Penn. Have your enemy an enemy answer, says K-Pro. So you think don't answer. So that's like don't speak, stay silent, don't say a word, don't answer. Hmm. All right, let's see what the answer is of the riddle anyways. White lie. Believe the lie. All right, we're not we're not trying to beat a lie detector test. Become a politician, says Tony Russo. Oh my goodness! All right, answer is you will have to say something so that I can't keep my word. So you'll have to say you'll chop my head off. Okay. If the statement is true, you'll be strangled, but then the statement will become false. If the statement is false, your head will be chopped off, but then the statement will become true. <laughs> so the answer is you have to say something along the lines of you'll chop my head off which is in the in the riddle if you lie I'll chop your head off so you need to come up with a conundrum Capro says boo oh come on that's not too bad so the, the riddle was if you tell the truth I'll strangle you if you lie I'll chop your head off. How do you get out of the situation? So you have to come up with your own conundrum. With the example they provide, you'll chop my head off. I always lie. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> uh, K-Pro doesn't like it. Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad. All right. One big hockey fan. One big hockey fan claimed to be able to tell the score before any game. How did he do it? Oh, okay. I think we've, we've had this one before. One big hockey fan claimed to be able to tell the score before any game. How did he do it? I'll get my cookie ready. No, you're thinking logically, K-Pro. That's not it. All right. Alan K is first. Evan Penn got a second. 
The score before any game is always 0-0 zero to zero in hockey and a lot of other sports. Alan Kay got it first. Evan Penn was soon second, but Alan Kay got it first. Alan Kay, can I do a birthday cookie? It's a birthday cookie for Alan Kay. How did he do it? Because the... I'll, get, I'll show the answer, but the answer will be 0-0. Zero to zero. The score before any hockey game should be 0-0. Zero to zero. So look at how, the, the, how it's worded. The score before any game. <laughs> Alan Case beat Evan Penn 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> uh, but we've had, that, we've had that one before because I recognize it. 18 pounds, 100 pounds. We're not doing math. We're not doing math. All right. The proposal. Unlike Joe, I was lying when I denied arguing against scrapping the proposal. Oh, my goodness. This is going to make my head hurt. Was Joe in favor of or against the proposal? <laughs> love, love, and tennis. Yes. <laughs> uh, unlike Joe... I was lying when I denied arguing against scrapping the proposal. So was Joe in favor of or against the proposal? We'll just, I'll take whoever, oh, K-Pro goes for and against. <laughs> K-Pro is like going around the rules because she wants to be, she wants cookies. All right. The answer is against. I was against getting rid of the proposal, so Joe wanted to get rid of the proposal. All right. So K-Pro found the loophole of finding out how to get cookies. I cannot deny her ability within the rules to get those cookies that she so desperately needs. <laughs> Tony Washington wants to do words. All right, we're gonna do a different riddle, a different puzzle. If you ever listen to NPR on Sunday's Weekend Edition, they have Will Shorts and he has a puzzle and I thought this one was pretty good. Give it to Alan, he actually answered. <laughs> All right. So we have a total of 12 words and the clue is the first word ends in go and what's left will answer the second one. And for the example, what is loaded onto a ship the answer is cargo, and when you take away the the G-O, you end up with car, which is another word for automobile. So the example is what's loaded onto a ship, and then the second word after you take off the go at the end is an automobile. <laughs> Let's already have. All right. So that's the example. The first word ends in go. You take off go, and then you get the second word or a synonym for the second word. So yes, tan, tan mango. So I, I don't know all of these, but I figured out a, some of them. One is mango. So you can go ahead and put the number and then put your guess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all through 12, so that I know which one you're guessing. I have it over here somewhere. Here we go. Mango Man, and so Cookie for Than, Cookie for Than, there you go, is the first one. Second one, Australian Sheep Menace and Cacophony. That one, Alan Kay got it first. Dingo, dingo, and then cacophony is din. So cookie for Alan Kay for the second one. Third one. Okay, I saw that in the chat, is tango. Ballroom dance in light brown, so tango and tan. Cookie for, who had tango first? Auntie Mame, cookie for Auntie Mame, who had tango first. Tango, and then the next one. Number four, 
Congo. Yes, Alan Kay got Congo. Where opposed to con. That's the other word. So Congo and con. Cookie for Alan Kay for number four. Number five, North Dakota City. It's got to be Fargo and Far at a distance. Alan Kay got that one, number five. Alan Kay for number five. Number six, game with a 25 square card. This one I didn't recognize right off the bat. Oh, okay. Bingo. Number six is bingo, and then a large container is a bin. All right, that makes sense. Who had bingo first? Bingo, bingo, bingo. Auntie Mame has bingo first. I am not a Mike Cowling 2.0. <laughs> Cookie for... Auntie Mame, who had bingo first. Next is number seven. Number seven. Let me see if I see that one anywhere. Gringo. I see it. Alan Kay had gringo first. Ryan Matthews got it second. White and the beard at the same spot. Okay. We're both getting old. I think I'm, I'm probably, well, no, I don't know if I'm older than Mike or not. Cookie for Gringo, first done by Alan Kay. Why is it that I must go? <laughs> uh, all right, number eight. Hmm, I don't know if I've seen eight. Okay, Alan Kay got it. Asiago, Asiago. Number eight. Alan Kay. Number nine. Chicago. Nine, Chicago. Capro. Capro got number nine. Man, this is... Unclaimed Don. <laughs> Son, oh, okay. I was going to say. All right, that's number nine. Number 10. Number 10 is Montego. I figured somebody got it by now. Ten, I'm looking for Montego. I don't see it. Ten, name of a bay in Jamaica. Card game associated with cheats. Maybe the answer is wrong. Monty. Montego and Monty. Five minutes ago. Montego, says K-Pro. So she says she said it. I'm looking. Montego, I don't see it. K-Pro. Oh, look, there it is. Montego, yes, all right. Montego and Monty, yep, yep, yep. Cookie for K-Pro. This, this is a lot of work for me. 825, she says. <laughs> okay, okay. And, okay, 11, California City. California City is San Diego. Okay, this is a lot of work. San Diego. San Diego, number 11. Uh, okay, need to do one at a time. You feel cheated again? Well, 
I thought it was okay to do this one all the time. San Diego, right? Sandy? Or maybe it's not San Diego? Lori James says San Diego. I'll give it to Lori James. California City cookie often made with pecans. A Sandy. Not fuel cheated. I cheated. Oh, okay. <laughs> 12. Enthusiastic response from an audience. Okay, this answer I'm not sure. Standing O stand in. Hmm. I'm not sure if we can figure out what that last one is. Number 12, standing O? Oh, standing O. Standing ovation. Enthusiastic response from an audience and substitute. Hmm. I think I saw a standing ovation. Lori James had standing ovation. Anybody else get it before? Why is it that I must go? Standing ovation. Standing O. Evan Penn got it. Standing O. Evan Penn. I, I think, hopefully I didn't, I'm not shortchanging anybody. Evan Penn. Three boxes of girl stuff. Standing O is the answer to number 12. Cookie for Evan Penn for getting number 12 first. Whew, all right. We are working right along. We're going to do Hint of Riches. Oh, oh my. Hint of Riches is here. We just finished doing the NPR Sunday puzzle. Part of it anyways. Now, thumbs up for the beard, says Hint of Riches. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to do some rebuses. This is usually a common word or phrase, and usually there's some type of picture. And the picture, if you think laterally will tell you what the answer is. So here we have one, this rebus it starts off with I'm and then Y-O-U is much bigger than the other one. Yeah, I like these too, K-Pro. These are usually pretty quick too. So you're bigger than me or something like that. I don't know, and I don't know what the answer is to any of these. But we're gonna do some rebuses. Let's see if we can figure it out. You after me, I'm smaller than you. I'm smaller than you. I think I like that one. You're bigger than me. I'm right in front of you. I think Dan might have that one. Say that again. <laughs> Copper Dan is here. I am you. So I am smaller than you. Than's got it. Cookie for Than. All right, let's move on to the next one. Oh, okay, I got this one. <laughs> I've got this one. I'll get my cookie ready. So who can type the fastest, maybe? Undercover police, police undercover. That's got to be it. Yep, undercover police. Cookie for Lori James, who got it first. I see other people got it too. Lori James figured it out and was able to type the fast. Oh, it was a big one. I'm not covered up, covering it up, am I? Nope. I don't know. Over Q's. Alphabet over Q's. I don't know. We've got the alphabet and then a Q underneath. Alphabet soup, says Tony Rusi. Alphabet over Q's. Watch your P's and Q's. There's got to be an expression in here somewhere. Hmm. 
I'm not sure. Uh, while we're no X. Oh, yeah, you're right. There's no X in there. It's the Forrest Fenn poem. It's got every letter except X. <laughs> Questionable characters. Yeah, no X. It's the Forrest Fenn poem. It's got every letter in the alphabet except X. <laughs> Questionable characters. Tony got it? No excuse. No excuse. Oh. No excuse. No excuse. No excuse. Nice. Tony Rusi. Cookie for Tony Rusi. All right. And here, before we move on to the next one, um, Marty Bird won or figured out Sassy's trivia question last week, and Marty Bird has not emailed me about uh, for his address or whatever address to send the cookies to. If you see Marty Bird in any chats, uh, ask him to email me. My email address is ajrainville1973 at gmail.com. If you see Marty Bird, tell him or her to... Marty said, give it to you. <laughs> so I've, he, hasn't, he hasn't emailed me yet with an address. So if you see Marty Bird, no, not Larry Bird, Marty Bird. You've seen him in the chat. He's been in a lot of live streams. So tell Marty Bird to email me because he has not emailed me an address to send some cookies. And we don't want these cookies to stick around. All right. All right, this is this isn't isn't too difficult. You know my birth year now, AJ. That's uh oh, it's you now know how old I am. <laughs> Think before you leap. That's got to be what it is. Think before you leap. Yep. Who got that first? Auntie Mame got that first. Stan was second, but Auntie Mame got it first. Think before you leap. Oh, that's your birth year too, Copper Dan. We are 70s children. All right, here's the next Rebus. Mm. Oh, you're a 1975 child, William. All right. S O I U D T E. Maybe I have to say it out loud. So I U T. So I U T. Oh, Mike is a 1970s kid. All right. So Mike is older than me. <laughs> S O I U D T E. Inside out. Wow. Out side. Nice. K Pro. September, Capper Dan. That is an excellent rebus. And that is a well deserved cookie. K Pro. Inside and out. Wow. Inside out. Even Mike thinks so. That's a good one. That's a good rebus, and that's a good answer. Okay, well, that one's not too difficult. <laughs> Bam, says K-Pro. <laughs> All right, this one's an easy one. I'm getting my cookie ready. <laughs> Alan K's got it. Alan K got it first. Greenhouse. Greenhouse. Greenhouse cookie for Alan K. We will move on to the next one. Simple as they come. That is correct. All right, here's another expression. I'll get the cookie ready. Oh, color and blindness didn't help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true.
There we go. Auntie Mame's got sitting on top of the world. That's got to be what that one is. Yes, sitting on top of the world. Auntie Mame got it first. Cookie for Auntie Mame. All right. Fried beans, says William. <laughs> Okay, here we go. This is a good one, too. But this one I got. Uh, okay, I'll give it to Ryan Matthews. Bad intentions. It's got to be bad intention. You're, you didn't quite get it, K-Pro. I'm going to give it to Ryan Matthews. Bad intention. Yes. <laughs> All right. We're close to, closer to the end. We're going to end with one round as far as we can get in words on stream. That's not what Ryan said. Ryan is close enough. Bad intentions. It was a typo. Ryan deserves it. <laughs> All right. So this is similar to Boggle where you're trying to make at least four letter words and you type in your guesses right into chat and it will go right into the game. Favoritism, oh goodness. Here we go. All right, we're looking for at least four letter words using the words at the top. Four letter words. Bring your anagram skills and put your guesses right into the chat and it will go into the game. Like I can see, oh, Evan Penn got line. There's also lean. Cling, sweetie got cling. I think the big word is, oh, Lori James got it, incline. That's gotta be the, no, there's a G in there too. Hmm. Icing. Icing is one. What are the other two letters? Ceiling. Auntie Mame got ceiling. There we go. We've got enough to move on at least. Now I'm trying to figure out Trying to figure out what the other ones are. Hmm. G I N E. Glenn, G L E N. Lori James got nice. There we go. Oh, lice. There we go. Lori James got that one too. Lice. All right. Here we go. Good job, everybody. We're going to move on. Lori James got three words. Let's move on to the next one. Hmm. We're looking for at least four letter words. At least four letter words. And all the four letter words are in alphabetical order, so that can help you figure out the ones that aren't that haven't been finished out yes yet. Codfish. And I'll admit I've seen, I've watched other streams with words on stream and I've seen that one before. <laughs> hmm. No. I don't know. 
All right. See you, K-Pro. I assume, Mike, you got to get ready for your show, too, if you're not still, if you're still here. <laughs> mm. I can't figure out any of those other ones either. I don't know. All right. We got nine out of 14 words. We will continue. Hmm. Only an I and a Y. Oh, okay. Dan got it. Stingy. Stingy. Stingy is the six letter word. It's like an N or an S word, and then a couple of T words in the four letter ones. Okay, Auntie Mame got one. Ting. Hmm. So it looks like an N and an S word, and then either an S or a T word. So we got sign. Nice. We've got enough to move on. That's the bare minimum we're trying to go for here. All right. We will continue. Words on stream. Wow, okay, here's the first one, we have a fake letter. There is one letter that is you don't use, and this is where it gets kind of hard as we get further on. Later on, we're gonna get fake letters and we're gonna get hidden letters. Hmm. So we're, we, there's one letter that is fake. You would think it would be the X, but it's not necessarily the X. All right, I'm pretty sure the X is fake. So do not use the X. Still not sure what the eight letter word is. Let's see, how about this one? All right, we've got enough to move on. Totem, there's a good word. Oh, wouldn't uh, total be in there too? Oh no, total is with an A. Hmm.
I can't think of any more. We didn't get the big word, but we got enough to move on. That's the important thing. All right, let's continue on. <clears throat> Again, we have a fake letter. We'll have a fake letter in here. All right, I'm thinking R is the fake letter. Do not use the letter R. Do not use the letter R. It's very hard to avoid using that too. Ah oh, man, I keep I keep wanting to use that R. There's another one. Oh, Digital Treasure Maps got it. Cottage. Welcome, Digital Treasure Maps. Got the big word, the seven-letter word. Nice. The R is fake, so do not use the letter R in your guesses. R is fake. Hmm. I don't know. That's a hard one. But we got enough to move on. That's what we're looking for. Moving on to the next level. Thumbs up, Digital Treasures Maps. You got that big word. <clears throat> Again, we have a fake letter. One letter is fake. Hmm. I'm trying to look at the the letters. I'm trying to figure out what the six letter word is. I don't know, I'm just gonna have to do some of these other letters because I, I can't come up with what it could be. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Z is fake. Hmm. Air Ramen's got to be one. Manure, Digital Treasure Maps gets the big one again. Nice. Man, we finished up level 10. But good job. Digital Treasure Maps got that big one. Manure. Whew. It's tough when you got that time frame. But this is a good game. I like I like doing this one. It works on your vocabulary. It uh, gets you thinking. Trying to come up with those words with the letters. And then it gets harder and harder as you go along. I love, I love it. I think, okay, we've got, we're five minutes away. 
Um, the Hint of Riches is on in five minutes. So head on over to the live stream, The Hint of Riches, when they come on. I hope everybody had fun today. I hope everybody got their lateral thinking on. And I will see everybody next week. Take care, everyone.